Hey there, how are you? Welcome to the free training and performance level presentation. This is Video Mastery My Way. My name is Paul Gordon. I run a company called The Art of Face Dancing, and I've been presenting my own work and presentations around the world on TV shows and stages for the past 30 something years to an estimated audience of well over 1.5 billion people. Billion with a B. And I've condensed all of the stuff that I use myself, all of the tips, tricks, tools, hacks, and techniques that I use myself into this program to help people like you shave weeks, months, and years off of their learning curve. So let's get into it. We're going to deal with three different categories of concepts and how to use them. And this is interactive, so be prepared to do what I'm doing some of the time. Okay? The first stuff is all about camera confidence. Camera confidence is both what you do and how it is reflected in the people who are watching you, your future and current clients. Okay? How do you do this? Well, for starters, you look right into the camera lens. It's right there. Okay? You don't spend your time with a selfie check. You don't spend your time looking at the screen. You look at the camera lens and you refer directly to the person with your thoughts and your ideas. Okay? I'm going to give you the example that we all know so well and you're going to see the difference. Ready? I'm going to give myself a selfie check. One, two, three. There we are. Now I'm looking at me in the screen and now I'm going to turn back to you and watch the magnificent attention that I give you. One, two, three, bam. There we are. Once again, I'm right on you. Now if you have a hard time with focusing on this impersonal camera lens, if it makes you feel, I don't know, insecure or a little frustrated or confused, whatever it is, do yourself a favor. Draw yourself a little smiley face on a piece of cardboard, cut it out, and tape it right above your lens. That way you can look at your smiley face instead of looking into the camera lens. However, there you go. That's the fix. The next thing we're going to deal with is who are you talking to? You look right into that camera lens and you talk to one person. One person only. I am talking to you. That is not everybody. I'm talking directly to you. The reason is that what you are seeing on your screen right now is my entire world and this is what you're focusing on and that way I look into my lens and I talk directly to you and you alone and this is how we have a two-way dialogue while I am having a one-way conversation. It's the difference between being talked at and being talked with. Okay? So, the next thing. Here's a special thing that you're probably not doing right now. Maybe you are, but it's stand up. Standing up gives you freedom and mobility to do what I consider the essential triangle, okay? The three-part body, voice, and face integration that enables you to deliver with impact and personality and all the other good stuff. You stand up the same way you see all these great people doing TED Talks or their own presentations. Tony Robbins, he's not sitting down. Richard Branson, he's not sitting down. Oprah Winfrey gives a talk, she's not sitting down. Okay, uh, Jenna Kutcher, uh, Russell Brunson, whoever it is, all these people, they're standing up. Every stand-up comic, they're not sitting down. Why? Because delivers more energy by using your body, voice, and face, okay? So now the next section, the camera universe, is going to involve you standing up. So pause this if you're not already standing and put your camera lens at eye level if you want to, if you dare. You'll get so much more out of this if you actually do that. 
because this next part is interactive, okay? Here we are. Camera universe. It develops control. Control is all about understanding the parameters of your camera universe. That's what that is, okay? When you move into a new house or new apartment, you don't just keep the stuff in the center of the room. You spread out and use all of the different borders, boundaries, and perimeters in order to make the place fully taken advantage of and use everything that it offers you. And that's what we're doing with our camera universe now. So, here we go. We're going to push to the extremes. You don't necessarily have to go this far, but you have to understand the power and the ability. And that's why we're going to move first near and far. Move near. Good. Far. Here we are. Let's go a little closer. Let's move closer. Near. Yeah. Hey. Nice shoes. Wow. <laughs> okay. And why do we do that? Because sometimes when we're standing and we have this ability, if I want to share a secret with you, I can lean in and share that secret with you. And if I move back, it's a breath of fresh air. It's a pause. Okay. We just went front and back. So now we go side to side. My left happens to be your right and vice versa. I'm going to go to my left, which is your right. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to go all the way to the other side. Ready? And all the way to the other side. And there we go. Good. And now if you want something really playful, okay, let's go off that side, down, and re rise up from the center. Ready? And over. <laughs> Good. Why is that valuable? Because it's playful. There's nothing wrong with infusing this stuff with a little bit of fun. How many people have you been with on these various online webinars and presentations where you wished there was something more fun? And you know something? Some of the people who are very successful are doing it partly because they're good and partly because they're more engaging. So, the next aspect is to deal with your hands. Your hands down, side, high, forward. Frame your face with your camera lens, with your hands forward. Why do we do that? Because sometimes we are going to learn to point and count correctly. Sometimes we point right at the camera, right at you. I believe in you. I want to show you something. Okay, so I point and I keep my finger out of, my, out of the way of my face. And the other hand, same thing. Okay, out of the way of my face. That's to the front. And I happen to use a whiteboard, so doesn't this make sense that we would point to the whiteboard? There's my presentation. There's first point. There's my second point. And there's my third point. And you know something? I'm now going to do it wrong. What's wrong with that? You can't see my finger. Because my camera universe is what you see. So you have to show me the finger here. Same with my wife's badass, incredible painting here. Okay, she's a visual artist and I get out of the way. I move to the side and I share with you the different stuff. There's the guy in blue. Okay, that's important also. Now there's another aspect to this. We count. Count one. Count two. Count three. Count four. Count five. Why do I show you that? Why is it important? Because you've seen some people say, and the second thing is, and you're thinking to yourself, I can't see both fingers, instead of listening to what they're actually saying. So you want to take away the prob problem of that. One and two, three, four, five. Same thing with the other hand. Okay. So what else do we have to do here? That is a certain amount of ability to control your camera universe. And in so doing, with that control comes the confidence that you use to talk directly to the camera lens and talk to one person only, right? Does this make sense? Good. Moving on. We're moving on to performance mindset. Okay, performance mindset. Now, 
performance mindset, what it means to get out there and do this stuff, to get out of your own way and say what you mean and bring the energy, okay? You don't need to feel insecure. If you've actually done the homework and you've done the research, then the thing that might be in your way is your fear of failure. And it's not that you're bad, it's that things can go wrong. And that's where performance mindset comes in handy. Every good performer knows that it's not about just balls to the wall going forward and doing it. It's about understanding that chaos can always find its way in. So what you do is you embrace the idea of the chaos and the problems and you consider them as friends as allies instead of as enemies that are going to try to make you fail by undermining your entire presentation. You embrace them and turn the enemies into allies. You do your due diligence before and then you understand that chaos sometimes finds its way in. You know in advance that you're not going to necessarily be able to just do a memorized thing and then you learn how to roll with it. Now the second aspect of performance mindset has to do with essentiality. That means everything that you're talking about is important and you don't just pass off things saying and here's a little thing that maybe will help maybe not. No, you use everything that you're saying no matter how trivial no matter how seemingly small. And it's all part of the bigger picture of things. It hooks into the larger scheme of things. So if you're talking about like a comma in a sentence, that's not just a comma. You imbue that with essential qualities. That comma is part of the structure of the sentence, enabling people to not be confused so that they can focus where you need them to be, so that they can put the whole thing together, so that you can give them this valuable service that fundamentally changes their life. You make it essential, even a little comma, right? So, that's that part. And now, I'm going to give you the last thing. This is one thing not to do. Like I said just before, chaos finds its way in and we find our ways to roll with the stuff and improvise. Don't apologize. Don't. Everybody will understand that there are problems and everybody will allow you the fact that something might go wrong and you just roll with it and you're doing the best you can. Stop apologizing, deal with the problem, go through the thing, and establish your not only credibility and authority, but also your leadership by having them see you move through something and come out the other end still a winner, still leading, still moving forward and learning. Does that make sense? When you do these techniques, you rise above the competition by developing heartfelt, honest messages that have confidence, control, and the energy that provides people with vim, vigor, verve, Compassion, energetic, heartfelt delivery that results in empathetic impact. That's what you want. They're not just buying the, your stuff. Give them you and let them love it because it's something important that will change the world. I hope this helped. If what I say resonates with you, if you understand why this makes sense so much, why I have earned a living at this for such a long time, then I'd be delighted if you book a strategy call with me. Click below 
and let's, uh, let's introduce ourselves to each other. I want to help you move from where you are to where you want to be every way I know how. I'm going to bring to bear everything I have taught myself and learned over all of these decades to make sure that you reach everybody the same, with the same exact impact. My best to you. I look forward to meeting you. Go get them. See ya.